Welcome to the Militia Gaming Community, I'm Trigger, and this is my summit guide for the Ford Attic Summit in the Crew 2. Let's go! Alright, my goal with these summit guides is to help you guys earn platinum rewards every single week. And to do that, I'm studying all of the best runs that I can find in order to find the best lines, the best shortcuts, and the best pro settings for each car. Before I start though, I just want to mention that I stream my full summit runs on Tuesday nights at 9pm Pacific Time right here on YouTube. If you want to come hang out with me and watch my full runs right when the summit comes out, you are more than welcome to. All right, let's get into it. The first event is the Santa Fe Speed Trap. For this Speed Trap, the Corvette Stingray drag car is definitely recommended. If you have Nitro Chemist, make sure it's equipped as well as pure and frenetic as your AFIX stats. This one is pretty simple, but traffic can be a problem. So with the line that I took, I was able to get 340 miles per hour as a solo, which will be even faster when I have someone that I can slipstream with you should definitely shoot for around 370 miles per hour, which is equal to around 595 kilometers per hour. Definitely use manual shifting and shift to fourth and fifth gear early. Fifth gear pulls super hard at about four to 5,000 RPMs. My Corvette Stingray Pro settings look like this. Next up is the wind power plant slalom. For this, I'll be using my Ford Focus. It's the vehicle that I have the best control with, and I have a full set of score breaker parts with maxed out skilled AFIX stats. This means each part that I have equipped to my car, I'm getting an extra 10% score, and seven parts means 70% more score with score breaker, which doubles the overall score at the end. The key to this slalom is definitely having those parts and your speed control. There's a tendency for people to want to go through a slalom as fast as they can. The problem is, unless you're extremely skilled, it is hard to keep your car in the correct position throughout the entire slalom going as fast as you can. So my recommendation is to have those parts and then control your speed as well as you can. There are several sections on this event that can make you lose control. So my advice, again, is to concentrate on controlling the vehicle first and then start to go for speed if you're unhappy with your results. My pro settings for the Ford Focus look like this. Next up is the Manhattan Slalom, and for this I'll be using the Pagani Zonda Hypercar. The top four scores of this event used a rally raid vehicle because one of the summit rewards a while back was a set of boosted score breaker parts for rally raid. This means that they get an extra 1% per part, which is 7% more in total. If you have those parts, obviously use a rally raid vehicle. I unfortunately do not have that set and I'm faster with the Pagani, so that's what I'm going with. I managed to snag the fifth rank score on this event despite not having those parts. To do well in this slalom, you will need score breaker and skilled AFIX stats maxed. Aside from that, it just takes practice. My Zonda Pro settings look like this. Next up is the Dallas Rallycross event using the Ford Fiesta. This event has one essential cut in it. I'll go ahead and let my full run play so that you can see I don't necessarily hit this cut perfectly each lap, but my time is still very good and likely to grant a high score in the summit. Also, some people recommend wall riding on some of these turns, but I've discovered that it is much faster to cut through the apex of the turn as you would in a normal race. And I think that this is because the walls now slow you down so much more than they used to.
my Ford Fiesta Pro settings look like this. Next up is the Midwest Golden Trail Rally Raid using any Ford that you would like. The world record holder along with second and third place all use the Ford F-150 Raptor Enforcer unit. To get a really good time on this event, you need to slipstream with a partner. But for my clip, I didn't have one and the path that you see here is the fastest path through this event, so I'll let my full run play. I do recommend Nitro Chemist with pure and pump or ventilated. I'll show you my pro settings at the end of this run, but I will be using that F-150 Raptor Enforcer unit. My Ford Raptor Enforcer Unit Pro settings are like this. Next up is the Big Bend Street Race using any Ford that you would like. I'm not 100% sure on this, but I believe the 2018 Ford Focus is the fastest Ford street car. I looked through the leaderboards and it was the highest ranked Ford I could find for this event, and it just so happened to be in the top five. There are a few cuts on this race that are capable with this Ford Focus. At 37%, you're gonna cut right and go straight towards the next checkpoint. And then at 70%, you can cut to the right again and reset your car the second you hit the checkpoint. Then when you respawn, cut left into the rock area and reset your car again. At 90%, you can cut left at the checkpoint to cut across the field. And that's really it for this event. My pro settings for the 2018 Ford Focus RS look like this. Next up is the crossover event for the Summit, Central Valley Rally Cross using the Ford GT Hypercar. This one will be really interesting as there is a pretty nasty cut for this course, but it's only possible by cars that are super fast. This clip you are seeing is the Ford Fiesta Rallycross car because I can't actually practice this race with the Ford GT. The cut happens at the first checkpoint of the race. You stay to the right of this fence and then you cut in between the checkpoint and the generator that's sitting right in your way. And then when you get past that, you reset your car near the rocks. What's interesting about this cut is that it can be done faster on lap two with a car that can jump to the checkpoint. I think the Ford GT is capable of doing this. Notice how far I fly when I was practicing this jump with the Ford GT outside of this event. I think it's possible, but if it's not, you can definitely run this course like I showed you in the first clip. 
The interesting thing about this cut is that you need to land your car on the right side of that checkpoint, which then bumps you to the right and over into the rock section and then you reset your car. Now I can't show you this on the clip because I can't race this with the GT, but I think it's possible, I really do. So we're gonna try that. Again, if you wanna see me try this, you can come to my Summit stream, which is Tuesday nights at 9 p.m. Pacific time. All right, my Ford GT Pro settings look like this. Next up is the Airport Terminal E Drift event using the Mustang GT Drift Car. This event is pretty simple. To get a good score, you're gonna need a few things. First, you're gonna need a set of parts that has the AFIX stat Slippery and Hothead. Make sure your Slippery is completely maxed out. This will allow you to have a huge multiplier during the event. Next, your goal should be to not hit any walls and maintain your multiplier throughout the entire event. If you hit a wall or drop your multiplier, you should start over immediately and try again. If you can do these two things throughout the entire event, you will score somewhere in the neighborhood of 600,000. This will be plenty of score for the summit. I expect myself to get a very high score on this event. My Ford Mustang GT Pro settings look like this. And the last event is the Golden Hills Racetrack Touring Car event using the F-150 SVT Raptor. This event will definitely test your skill more than anything else. I have a feeling that this will be a very hard event for most people considering there aren't really any cuts that I could find and it's all track racing. I definitely recommend Nitro Chemist with pure and extra pump. Touring cars are also notorious for being terrible shifters when it comes to using an automatic transmission or automatic gearbox, so I recommend switching to a sequential and learning how to shift properly. Downshifting before corners can definitely help you avoid over braking, which is a huge problem for this truck, and while you're shifting between first and fifth, your gear changes are going to be much cleaner with a sequential gearbox, so please give that a try. All right, good luck to everybody. My pro settings for this SVT Raptor are like this. All right, that's it for this one, guys. If you have any questions, don't forget you can hit me up on Instagram, Twitter, or Discord. I read every single DM that comes my way, and I'll put a link to those things in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. Shout out to all the Militia subs. I'll catch you on the next one. Trigger out.